I'm Chris Jordan. I take photographs of giant piles of garbage. <laughs> Yesterday, my wife Victoria and I drove to Seattle airport and got on a commercial jetliner, which from the outside looks like it's all made of metal. But when you get on the inside, it's all made of plastic. We walked down the plastic aisle and we put our plastic backpacks into the plastic overhead containers next to the plastic paneling, sat down in our plastic seats, and the stewardess walked down the aisle after we took off, serving plastic contaminated water in plastic bottles, pouring it into plastic cups, even tried to give us plastic stir sticks. And a thousand miles of jet exhaust later, here am I to talk to you about being the change. <laughs> So where do we start to talk about our mass consumption? Well, here's one possible place. Inside the stomachs of tens of thousands of dead baby albatrosses on one of the remotest marine sanctuaries on Earth. I went there and took these photographs. Not a single piece of plastic in any of these photographs was placed there. These are the actual stomach contents of dead baby birds in one of the remotest places on our planet. Oh, what have we here? Can you see what that is? That's a shell oil plastic cap. Would have been a little more ironic if it had been a British petroleum plastic cap because while, we're in, while we were on Midway last July, the BP Gulf oil atrocity was happening in the Gulf of Mexico. And it was uh, incredibly bizarre to be standing over these dead birds that were filled inside with brightly colored petroleum products and at the same time, seeing photographs of uh, birds in the Gulf of Mexico that were dying because they were coated outside with our petroleum products. A, uh, an astonishing experience. And speaking of BP, let's take a look at their logo really quick. Have you ever looked closely at the BP logo? Like, really closely? Let's do that. Let's just zoom in on the BP logo. Oh, look. Could it possibly be made of lots and lots of little somethings? What are all those things? We zoom in a little closer. Oh, it looks like lots and lots of something green. Huh. Let's take a look, closer look. Oh, look, it's the websites of all the green conferences around the country. It's the Greener Gadgets Conference. Uh-oh, I did the keynote at that one. That's a little embarrassing. Uh, the, green, the Greener Automotive Conference, the Greener Universities Conference. Uh-oh, let's take a little closer look. Oh, no, there's the TEDx Great Pacific Garbage Patch Conference. Oh no, we zoom in a little closer, and here am I right there to come and talk to you about being the change. Hmm, let's zoom in a little closer at the TED logo, shall we? Uh-oh, is that made of lots of somethings? Zooming a little closer, it is made of lots of somethings. Oh geez, it's those horrible plastic suitcases they gave us a couple of years ago. They're all filled up with plastic junk. I admit, I took one of them home and we opened it on the living room floor like it was Christmas morning. Well, that's a little too much irony for a Saturday for me, so let's zoom back out. <laughs> keep zooming, keep zooming. Don't stop, keep zooming. Can we get out to a nice safe? Okay. There, that doesn't look like it's anything. Okay. Keep zooming a little further. Uh-oh, it looks like it's starting to be part of a bigger picture. What is that? Oh, no. Oh, there he is. One of our forefathers, Ben Franklin, the expression on his face is kind of like the expression my mom used to have on her face when she'd come in and my room is a mess. <laughs> Looking back at us across the centuries, wondering, has it really come to this? Oh. Isn't it interesting when you zoom further and further back in American culture, when you get back far enough, it always seems to be about money. Lots of money. We keep on zooming. Is that as far as we're going to go? No, wait, look. I start to see some kind of blobby looking things there. What are those? Oh no, is this all part of an even bigger picture? Uh oh, it is. What's it going to be? You can see the money is, you can barely, barely see it now. That's hundreds of thousands of dollars containing all of our green conferences and our jet fuel. Zoom back a little bit further. What is that? Oh no. 
oh my God, is it a piece of plastic? It is, it's a piece of ocean plastic from the Pacific Garbage Patch. You can see it's surrounded by lots of other ocean plastic. A couple of fishing floats, there's a bottle cap. Zooming back a little bit further, oh, don't tell me, oh my God, we ended up inside the stomach of a dead baby albatross again. And from this perspective, maybe it's possible to see the astonishing metaphor that Midway presents. And that is, it's like looking in a mirror at our own inability to discern what is nourishing from what is toxic to our bodies, to our culture, to our environment, and to our individual spirits. And this to me is what we really need to understand about plastic pollution and about the Pacific Garbage Patch. It's not something that starts in our oceans. It's not something that starts in our rivers. It's not something that starts in our supermarkets. It's not something that starts in the plastic manufacturing companies. The origin of the Pacific Garbage Patch is inside our minds and inside our spirits. And that's where it needs to be solved. It's like alcoholism or a drug addiction problem. It's not something out there, it's something in here. <coughs> and if we're gonna be the change, then when we really begin to get that and really begin to fight the individual battle in here that each one of us needs to fight, then this tremendous opportunity opens up for us. And that is that in that process, each one of us gets to save our own soul and we can begin to become models for the entire world of what it looks like for the world's most consumptive industrial society to transform itself into a culture of loving stewards of the sacred miracle that is Spaceship Earth. <coughs> Thank you. <laughs>